I think that um, the uh, the idea that has been touted about was that they've been very the government have been very keen to stress that um, you can have up to twelve books in your cells, and it's only books that have been sent in by family and friends that you will you will get as um, a reward for good behaviour. So it's, they're not curtailing people's reading as such. But you only get allowed you're only allowed twelve books in your cell if you're in an open prison. If you're in a, a, a sort of closed prison, um, then you're lucky if you can have two or three books in your in your cell. And also, I mean, that Charlie um, was it Charlie Gilmore? Charlie Gilmore. So yeah. You never get to the you library. Don't, you don't get to the library. He yeah. said in, he had to in 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 Wandsworth Prison when he was in Wandsworth Prison for a month. He never got there, and he asked every day. It was only when he went to Wayland Prison that he got sort of 15 minutes. He was allowed 15 minutes in the in the library. Um, and per day or whatever it was and he said that's the thing that kept him sane and I, when I posted this on Facebook because I said I think this is just cruel and unusual punishment not allowing um, prisoners to have these books and I posted this and, some, and someone came back and said well we should be concentrating about the, on the drug problem in prisons not books but as Charlie Gilmore said, if you um, if you don't have the books, you have it's a, it's a means of escape. Prisoners are looking for a means of escape. If you don't have the books, the drug problem is actually going to get worse. So it's really really short sighted. So I really disagree with that. And my sister's a probation officer, so I made sure I got my facts straight by talking to her first. And she was saying that the access to even though libraries are mandatory in prisons. It's about whether the prisoners actually have access to that. And if, it, if it's about people trying to smuggle things in with books, then you employ more people yeah, to go through the post. post. I'm sorry, that's not an excuse to say, well, we're going to withhold your um, reading as, a, as a, a reward for good behaviour. That's not on. And in fact, I was doing um, a talk in, in Holloway Prison a couple of years ago with English Pen. And, um, and I had one woman come up to me who was in her kind of early 50s, late 40s, early 50s, saying the first time she'd ever read a book was when she went to prison. And, you know, and I just thought that was, it was shocking. And I mean, there were, the, the, the problem is in prisons, the low literacy levels in prisoners. And so one way to counteract that, if we're talking about rehabilitation, etc., is to give them more books. Mm. So I just think it's a, a really, really wrong decision that, that that's been made. And as far as recommending one book, <laughs> I mean, oh my God. Um, um, for a young person. For a young person. I think something, that, you know, it'd have to be something they could relate to, something that spoke to them. Um, there are a number of um, publishers, like Barrington Stoke, for example, who write books for teens, but which have a a sort of lower reading age so um, if you're struggling with your literacy and your reading but it's not about talking down to those prisoners but it's about giving them stories that they can access um, and stories that will relate to them but at a sort of reading age that they can they can manage and then start with those and maybe move uh, and then kind of encourage them to read more and more and more but it's about finding out with the likes of each prisoner and, and, and that's why we need a, a prison librarians to talk to them and find out what they're interested in and then to kind of recommend books accordingly. So there's no way I can stand and just recommend one book <laughs> as a one size fits all kind of thing. But I mean, it's a big speaking class. Yeah, so. Any more questions? Question. Can, can you just wait?